There is no way to express the joy you see on a parent's face when they come to drop the child at school, especially of those who are underprivileged or with a rural background, because they see that by providing the child with the opportunity of education, they see hope, they see a bright future, and it is possible because of thousands of dedicated teachers who have taken it as a profession and a mission to educate the future of India. Children are like seeds, you know, they have the huge potential within. I think it's about how we tap it. You can either crush the seed and never allow it to grow, or you can, you can nurture it so that it becomes an, 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 a big banyan tree. I have completed my BA in English and uh, I started my career in the year 1996 as a data entry operator. I joined a company called Vestry Software and uh, so I grew up in that company. In fact, that company gave me an opportunity to get into software. So I entered software in the year 1998. So from 2003 onwards, um, I started volunteering in the weekends. I started going to juvenile homes and a few other orphanages also and started spending a lot of time. I can sing and I can also kind of relate to children very easily. So I started telling them stories, I started singing for them and things like that. It gave me an opportunity to in fact understand myself, like my own strengths and I felt that okay this is where my heart is. So I was actually you know thinking a lot about what I was doing. I mean I think it happens to every one of us at some point in time in life like am I doing what I want to do is something that I always think. And uh, so I mean, I mean, from my volunteering experience, I got you know, to meet a lot of people who were really passionate about working with children and that further strengthened my you know, vision also. So I think it's been four years since I uh, entered this field and I'm certainly enjoying what I'm doing. Children seem to be rather inquisitive and they seem to be natural learners. I grew up in uh, Nagpur and then uh, when I was about 12 we went to the US. I spent the next uh, four years studying and then went on to college and worked for about seven years at Johnson Johnson. Um, it was during my travels in South America and Africa that really informed a fair bit of uh, 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 my uh, interest in education. Um, largely it was influenced uh, by a stay for about two months in uh, Uganda. Uh, where I interacted with a lot of uh, kids, teaching them English. Um, and then subsequently I came to India and spent about um, five months traveling in the north and spent two months in Himachal Pradesh teaching kids. Uh, I stayed at a home and taught them English, taught them science, worked with them on social studies. Um, so it, it kind of solidified my position that I didn't really want to go back and work in a corporate environment. Well, for the last uh, three years I've been working with the Relief Foundation in Chennai. And uh, through Relief Foundation, we've had the opportunity of working in three schools. Uh, one is in Chennai, is Sri Ram Matriculation School. And one is uh, VSR Montessori School in Andhra Pradesh. And another one is in, uh, in a small village in Nagapatnam district called Sri Shivitya Mandir. For the last uh, year and a half, I've been living in a small village of Anekoil in Nagapatnam district. Um, I stay in the school campus. Uh, the village is largely um, farm-based and fishing-based. Um, my experience in the last three years, I would say it's been an absolute pleasure, a learning experience, um, something that I probably didn't anticipate at all. Uh, the kind of uh, involvement with which uh, I have worked is a surprise to me uh, because uh, the, uh, my friends always used to say, you seem to have drive but there's no passion and here there seems to be that passion. And so yeah, I seem to have found some, a particular niche for myself here. Ultimate purpose of the teacher is to give the education in its full form. I'm a doctor, I'm a medical professional. I'm doing my gynec practice in Madurai for the past 30 years. First 30 years, that's my first profession and that is still my profession. I cannot change it. 
But thing is, after getting into lionism, after becoming the governor, now I am, my time is more taken up by this training when compared to my medical profession. Yeah, I went to a teacher's training college. Then again, I did all these things, whatever they, that is necessary for the training. After finishing my surgery at 10.30, I'll sit and work with my manual. Yeah, you have to change your uh, thinking about becoming a teacher to wanting to become a teacher, right? There should be that longing to teach what I can do for these children. All those things should be there and it's a hard work. You should remember it's a hard work and you have to work for it daily. From day one until the time you teach, you teach wherever you are teaching. So it should be there. If you're ready for that, definitely you can do that. But wanting should be there, desire should be there. The teacher ratio is definitely bad in India and I think that has a major impact on how much students are able to learn. Uh, it's, it, I would say we are being unfair to the child's education by not giving them the focus that they need. I did my uh, engineering and information systems uh, from Bits Pilani. Um, I graduated in 2009. Um, <coughs> I, I joined a startup in Bangalore, uh, after that I worked there for a year and then I moved to Chennai, I was working in a startup for two years. Uh, right now I'm a part of this NGO called uh, Teach for India and as a part of it I'm uh, a fourth grade teacher in uh, Chennai Primary School in Kamdhanagar, it's a corporation of Chennai School. I really wanted to give back to the society, I didn't do much in Bangalore but as soon as I came to Chennai, I joined this uh, NGO called Deepam where uh, we're teaching underprivileged kids for two hours every weekend. Uh, I would say that those two hours every week was really the best two hours for me uh, in any week. Uh, my job was good, I mean I was like creating new things and all, wanting to be an entrepreneur, everything was fine, but uh, I started finally feeling a bit satisfied that I was contributing at least two hours of my time every week to teaching underprivileged kids. One and a half years in Deepam taught me that teaching was really uh, my calling. I really enjoyed teaching those kids, uh, you know, like think of different ways to explain something. Uh, all of these really made me love teaching. So uh, that's when I got to know about this uh, NGO called Teach for India. Quite a few people from uh, my college have uh, been a part of this. So I applied, I got in and um, I would say I'm uh, living a dream life right now. Uh, uh, the thing is, every day uh, is a great challenge in my classroom. At the same time, every challenge that has been met is a big victory for me. So, uh, every day being a victorious day is, uh, is what I would call a dream life for myself. Personal front, I think, uh, probably it's kind of connected. Probably because my professional life is so good, my personal life has also really improved. Uh, to say the least, I've been smiling a lot uh, these days. Uh, and I definitely learn a lot from my children in my classroom. Those fourth graders really tell me what life is all about. For them, it's about being happy every day. So I, I thought I forgot it when I was working in my corporate life, but now every day these kids remind me that you're, you're not living life to be worried every day, you're living life to be happy every day. And I think that, that is something that I cannot forget. Every single day they keep reminding me about this. I would say that it, it's such a wonderful profession that uh, you, you get to be in touch with the spirit of the children and, and you get to see what, you know, like who the children are. I'm basically a Chennaiite. I was born in Chennai and brought up in Chennai. So I was probably doomed for an engineering career and uh, I just completed my engineering before two years and now I'm in a teaching profession and I'm in the field of Montessori education. Uh, I worked here, right here in Cascade for two months after finishing a one year teaching diploma and uh, it was very nice and I'm doing another diploma this year. Right through my school and through my college I was very bored up actually. I was hating every moment of uh, everything I did and I was wondering whether if there's not any other way to learn or is there no joy in learning and I discovered something in which uh, children were enjoying learning. And as I've seen here, children do enjoy learning. And it's such a wonderful way to learn. To be able to see that the joyful activity in the children. You know, once you say something and something clicks off in their brain and they start pursuing something on their own and doing that stuff, it 
that what that's what gets to me i believe passionately about equity in education i really feel uh, education is a right like health is and like you know free speech is so i really would like to put my efforts into making sure there's you know equity in education and that children who happen to come from a low socio economic background why should they not have uh, what a child that's going to a rich school is getting i'm basically a person who is very interested in education um it's been something i've been very interested in from uh when i got out of college because i really believed um maybe a little arrogantly then that i could teach better than a lot of my own teachers um so i'm here because i still have that uh passion about finding ways for different people not just children people to stay as learning human beings um i came back to india for two reasons one was that i really felt um well what in what what one can vaguely term is a patriotic uh, pull back to working for um my country um because i really felt that a lot of changes can be effected and i came with that sort of positivity the second reason being that um when you when you're in the field of education the cultural context really matters and um i don't think i would have really fit in a you know school in melbourne or sydney and it would have just been very difficult for me and i think there would have been a big gap between my colleagues and uh, myself and students and myself so i had an offbeat schooling myself <laughs> and i taught in an offbeat school so um i really do think that some of the underlying principles of these kind of schools um are meaningful and which is why i want to put my efforts and energy in furthering those models of schooling more than i want to with traditional schools outward appearance they look like very regular traditional schools um but i i like to believe that we're starting off some sort of a revolution inside each of these schools wherein we're getting teachers to start taking more charge taking more responsibility um feeling like they can steer the school um we're getting a uh, children to understand that it's not a fearful environment the school is not a fearful environment so working with teachers to relate with children that is not based on fear um so inside it's very different outside it looks very regular and very traditional because the structures the buildings the procedures all look like a traditional school but i think the quality of relationships in the schools are changing the discourse on teacher has always been that there is a professional teacher out there in the school and that's the only teacher we are talking about but i've heard and and it's been said that human beings are by nature pedagogical everybody is a teacher around here well i've been my schooling from a very small town uh, called metur in tamil nadu uh, did well in school Uh, then as usual like any other uh, indian it i mean indian male i, I joined uh, engineering computer my engineering from rc nagpur um, then i joined the it industry worked there for like 7 years had my moment of truth uh, quit the it industry joined education uh, i've been working uh, in education since and right now i'm kind of uh, the director of a school uh, in rural space uh, place in tamil nadu called anek kogal uh, that's been my journey in short Oh, school life was really wonderful um, in the sense um, to kind of stand uh, among the top students of the class was really great but then uh, uh, for a while I always felt pressurized because once I stood first I still remember my story from first standard I got my first rank and then uh, I couldn't go down I mean like uh, there's always this expectation that you have to keep coming first all the time in your life and that was really really uh, pressurizing in a way Uh, so it was enjoyable in the sense that people really uh, celebrated when you came in first but then personally as a self uh, i felt really really pressurized uh, throughout my school life which i probably didn't even speak to uh, speak about it to anybody um 2005 and 6 uh, if i clearly remember i was working with pipro technologies and then it industry especially when you're serving a banking client you have what you call as a code free period that's a time you don't do any coding but you still take your salary home so very hefty package by the way Uh, so I was sitting and reflecting I had a lot of time to reflect because I was not coding so I had a lot of time to reflect on what I am doing 
and is it really worth the money that i'm taking home i'm doing work that's worth the money that i'm taking home uh, the, the the straight answer was no uh, though it took time for me to actually leave the industry and then uh, uh, then come into schools uh, that was the moment where i kind of had, had that uh, feeling that i have to leave this place and then while i was working with ibm i went around the uh, journey across the country for like 3 4 weeks uh, i sat at rural schools in bihar uh, it was fun Uh, and then um, and then i also always enjoyed uh, uh, teaching in classrooms uh, i had been volunteering uh, uh, right from my childhood uh, so i felt i connected these two things then i thought it's a it's a right thing to do i'm working in this uh, uh, as i told you i'm working in the school called uh, uh, shri shri vidya mandir uh, at anai kovil um, in the nagapatnam district of uh, tamil nadu the school was built uh, built after tsunami ravaged the i mean ravaged the region uh, so it was built like 5 6 years before Uh, it's it's kind of uh, located on uh, on 8 acres of land it's an amazing school it's very close to the sea and it serves children who are affected by uh, the families uh, who are affected by tsunami uh, i'm working as a director of the school that uh, we have around 800 600 children and like 43 45 staff in the school uh, and and most of the parents are either uh, are, are either the fisher folk uh, or who are uh, who are farmers uh, in the region children really want to learn they don't want to let go of any learning experience so they want to capture every magical moment of learning it started uh, many years ago with just love for children that's it so husband and i decided to adopt a child and that's when we realized that we can love children other than our own it didn't stop there we moved into children's uh, rescue and rehabilitation work as a team um i formed a small group of parents who were interested in children and we got ourselves more and more involved in uh, children's rights issues rehabilitation rescue um children in crisis so i held some important portfolios with the government on an honorary capacity i was a chairman of the juvenile welfare board was also a magistrate in the children's court so it was a long uh, drift from my earliest qualification to as an engineer i moved into children's laws related to children and their rights and i realized that uh, very less was being said about it and uh, so 10 long years stayed with uh, this whole concept of uh, juvenile rehabilitation and all those kind of things and i landed myself on this very important revelation that things went wrong very early in their lives things went wrong at the school level at the family level and uh, there was nobody to hold them together and say that give them the hope that uh, they could study they could move on they could feel competent to uh, become you know uh, to go into a safe future so that's when this whole branching out happened and from the you know school they all graduated into these juvenile homes so that was my biggest revelation and for me it was um a call that i needed to actually extricate myself from the juvenile system and then move into education so that's where i am in now so we have done lots and lots of work with children in uh, high risk areas we have helped people start schools and uh, and innovate in the schools uh, with a child centric approach so what makes a child feel good and uh, competent and uh, really help the child to understand his own need and address that need through the help and guidance of the adults who are in the environment take the community along take the parents along so there has been a long journey I had an English teacher throughout my middle school years. Um through the world of language she uh, really opened out for me various doors and I can't ever thank her enough about it. There were several people at different phases um but then one person I still remember uh, for the kind of uh, uh, critical thinking he brought in us was uh, my school vice principal uh, by name Mr. Vasudevan. Uh, he taught us physics uh, and he always taught us to question things. and from my college life there was this uh, electrical engineering professor called anjali jungare um she was uh, she was in on in a way a professor and also in a way uh, more caring uh, and motherly uh, as an adult probably we think that we don't need such a care uh, when you are in engineering college but then i felt that everybody needed that care oh my uh, <coughs> computer science teacher from my 11th and 12th standard 
uh, I think every single student in her classroom still remembers her. Uh, it's not just what she taught, it was also about how she taught us and uh, how she treated us. Uh, she, she is definitely someone that uh, we will not be able to forget. My 8th standard Tamil teacher. That's why I'm very good in Tamil. All the poems, everything, it's because of her. And another teacher was a physics teacher for me in the high school, who made me uh, really feel less anxious about the subject. The last three years has been humbling. It's been very humbling because uh, I've understood that theory is not easily translatable into practice uh, and that essentially education is an endeavor of, made of human beings. The experiences are manifold when I'm talking about experiences with the children. Um, one is um, I find these children uh, really, really inquisitive uh, in a way. Uh, but also, uh, also because they've been through a traditional uh, uh, schooling uh, uh, schooling pattern of life, um, I, I feel that their, their creativity or, uh, or their ability to speak up uh, is kind of um, silenced. I can you know, say with pride that almost all the children in this school actually relate to me. They respect me and I think even in the other schools that we run. But they, all, they also know that I'm there for them and I'm, they can actually friend, you know, be a fr I mean, have a friendly chat with me. So in that case, it all depends on how we you know, relate to children. Basically, to go into a classroom without any prejudices about the children and uh, you know, just watch what they're doing and to correspond to their needs with the useful help and you know, not doing too much but with the right kind of help that will inspire them to learn. I had not the good fortune of being a teacher for a long time. So I really, uh, you know, have not experienced that kind of a respect. But let me tell you, the minute I started transacting with parents and children in village schools, the minute you acknowledge and respect them, then they feel respected and they in turn respect you. My experience, uh, children seem to be rather inquisitive and they seem to be natural learners. Uh, I think it's the adults that seem to seem to be uh, challenged in creating certain conducive learning environments, and um, it's quite easy actually. I can spend half an hour with some fifth standard kids, and I don't know if they'll learn about maths or English, but I know they'll learn how to think perhaps, they, because the kind of questions they're asking already indicate that they're thinking. They may they may fail in that maths exam, but I think we need to tap into that curiosity, and create something around that curiosity, rather than saying, hey, take this information and learn it. I believe that uh, students can learn a lot only if they love the place that they are in. Uh, just like how they enjoy playing, and they want to play every day just because they enjoy playing. Uh, I want my classroom to be a place where they enjoy, and as a result, they spend a lot of time over there, and in the process learning. But uh, what we have seen is, once you, uh, once the curiosity and is uh, aroused, and uh, once the children find the joy in learning, the examinations, the results, they're still there. The children do achieve it, but it's not the end. Uh, the learning continues beyond that and it goes on for life. And it's, it's with complete joy and happiness. So there's full self-motivation. And in that sense, the children are really joyful learners. We see children being a lot more free. We see them uh, asking more questions which was a rarity, yeah. There's more order, and that's not an order that's coming from imposition, it's an order that's coming from within the children, yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, otherwise I've also found them, uh, in a way, when you give them, this, um, give them the space to be free, I found them um, that they are ready to ask you questions. Uh, they really treat you like a friend, in a way. Uh, they actually um, joke around with you, uh, there's a lot of humor involved in that. Uh, yeah, and they are, uh, and they're really wonderful in that way. Because every batch, every child actually provides you with a unique opportunity to learn. And I think it's, it's the responsibility, uh, you know, as adults to actually, you know, create such opportunities for them to learn. A, a teacher, uh, the impact that a teacher can have is something I don't believe any other profession could possibly have. And the impact that we could have on India by joining teaching is something that other professions might not be able to create at the same level. I think it is more than the parents during that uh, between around uh, 6 to 60 
I think it is more than the parents. The teacher's influence is more than the parents. Extremely motivated. I mean, it, it says something when teachers come day in and day out and work eight hours a day, ten hours a day, and they don't see the results that they want. It can be extremely frustrating for them. Um, and so motivation-wise, I mean, hands down, it's been, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with these teachers. The role of the teacher should be in, in the background. The children should take the center stage and they should define their own learning through their own experience. I think it is a profession. Um, it first, it becomes profession because if you call it as a profession, you will certainly be acting professionally. And professional approach is certainly needed in today's uh, you know, uh, world for schools. Because if you look at it as a philanthropy, you certainly are going to actually you know, deal with children in a different way. We don't believe in that. We certainly believe, in fact, I certainly believe that every child is capable. The moment you consider that as a philanthropy, you will, you will tend to compromise. And we don't think, I don't think we can ever compromise in a child's uh, education process. If I consider that as a vocation primarily, then I'm going to actually focus a lot on earning money alone. And uh, you know, like I have been talking to some of my friends who have finished the college with me, and uh, they are very inspired. They, they just, they, they're saying that, oh my God, what is this? You're in such a cool profession. You know, like you're following your interest and it's so cool and I mean, the, the response has been quite good and they've been spend, spreading around it to their friends and all that. I think what we need to appeal to, to people is that it's a profession that can inherently transform them. And I think that, is, should, that should be the hook for people to come in. Teaching first needs passion. A per only a passionate te a person can become a teacher. So today's youth, I think many of them are really passionate about teaching, but they don't know how to teach. So that involves, I know, experts from the field getting involved with those, you know, youth uh, in the process of, you know, making them to become good teachers. Before they enter into the training, teachers training, there should be some urge for teaching. See what I can do for these children. But from a personal standpoint, um, there's a tremendous amount of satisfaction one gets when working with colleagues who are engaged in teaching children, teaching oneself, because you are constantly learning. You're, you're learning about psychology, you're learning about sociology, anthropology, uh, you are working at your own, like yourself. Um, so if you want to learn, no better place than to teach. Educating or just being an educator can really be something that could transform your soul. That is, I think, something that needs to get across. I've been a teacher uh, in the recent past, and uh, this has been the best time of my life uh, because of the impact that I'm able to create in, the, in a child's life. Every day, my day is necessarily good because even if a child smiles at me at the end of the day or any time during the day and when the child says thank you, that is a satisfaction that I think no other profession can ever give me. I think once you come into a classroom, you be positive with the children and you trust your children, you have faith in your children, I think that's enough. Everything else, the outer things, I don't think matter. Like you have to believe in the children and believe in yourself, that's all. I really think what teachers need to do is really uh, understand and believe that they can be agents of change. And if, if there's anything I can communicate that will help them understand that they're going to lead change, they're going to lead transformation. Um, and if they can be light unto themselves. Who is God? You know, it's a point of arrival for a child very early. So God, if he's a friend, then teacher is a friend. So Guru Devo Bhava will be a friendly term for this child who feels a friend is somebody I like, I can ask, I can learn, I can argue, I can take liberties and um, I can respect and I can acknowledge, I can do a lot so I feel that um, this is a very valid thing in today's context. Definitely it's valid, but in a way that it is contemporary from the view of a child. 
today teachers are revered in many parts of our country because of who they are and how they have transformed societies how they have really not by really stay, saying that i am better than you but rather than i am going to be with you let's do this together as teachers let us pledge to work towards realizing tagore's dream and let us by education of impressionable minds create the future where the mind is without fear and the head is held high where knowledge is free where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls where words come out from the depth of truth where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action into that heaven of freedom my father let my country awake